Good morning and welcome to another Ethereum video. Today I'm going through the Ethereum JavaScript API and looking at how we can connect our smart contract to an actual frontend and create dApps, create web pages that have smart contracts running as the backend. All of the code can be found on my GitHub as usual. I hope you'll enjoy the video. Let's get into the code. We're going to start off in the terminal and make sure that before you start that you have Node.js installed and that you also have npm installed. Otherwise, you'll have uh, troubles along the way. And if you don't know how to install those, just Google install Node.js, install npm, and you'll be able to download it and figure it out. Once you're done with that, we're going to install something called uh, a test RPC, which is a local client for testing and developing Ethereum applications. And you do this by typing npm install and g for global, then ethereum js dash test rpc. And I've already installed this, so it might look a bit different for you. And once you have installed that, we're gonna go ahead and run this. And then you just type test rpc. And you can do that wherever you want, and you'll get and you'll get a bunch of accounts and private keys here that you'll be able to use in your uh, Ethereum application. And once you're done with that, we're going to open up a new tab or window here in your terminal. And we're going to create a folder where you want your project to be stored. So we're going to make a new directory called, let's call it value test. And we're going to go into that folder. And, and we're going to type npm init to uh, to create our package.json file and have our node modules. And you can just press, uh, well, as long as you don't have a capital letter, you can just press enter all through these questions here. And once that's done, we're going to install the actual JavaScript API from Ethereum. And it's called Web3. And you install it by typing npm install ethereum slash web. 3.js with dash dash save and the same thing here I've already installed this so it might look a bit different for you and once that's all done we are now ready to start developing we have everything we need and we're going to start off with our backend code which is our smart contract and we can use remix just like we did in our previous videos but now we're going to connect it to our test RPC client instead of using the virtual machine in Remix. And after that, we're going to create the actual frontend with HTML and JavaScript. But for now, we're going to the Remix ID here. And I've created a very simple contract here called value contract, where we hold a, an integer called value and we have a getter and a setter. If you don't feel like uh, typing this out yourself, you can get it at my GitHub, which will be linked in the description. But once you do have this contract, you can uh, simply make sure that you select Web3 provider here. Previously, we had the uh, JavaScript VM and you're going to select the Web3 provider and it will ask you, are you sure you want to connect to an Ethereum node? You can hit OK. And this is the standard endpoint for the API. So you hit enter and once that is done, we're going to uh, create this contract and it is now created uh, and connected to our Web3 provider. We're going to get back to this later and get the address, but for now we're all set here and we're going to go and create our front end. And then we're going to open up our favorite editor and create a file called index.html in the folder that we created before called value test. And in here I have a very simple HTML structure where we have just a title, a label, input field, and then a button. And you can get all of this HTML at my GitHub if you don't feel like writing it yourself. And we have two scripts included here right, right now. And one is the actual JavaScript API from Ethereum that we installed before. And the second is uh, a jQuery library just uh, to make it a bit simpler. And what we need now is some more JavaScript in this in order to fetch the value from our smart contract and also be able to input and set values in our smart contract. 
So below here we're gonna get another script tag like so and we're going to start off by making sure that our web3 provider is initialized correctly and we do that by checking if type off web3 is not undefined web3 is equal to new web3 web3 dot current provider and if it's not then we'll type web3 is equal to new web3 new web3 dot providers dot http provider and then we need to give it the link to our test rpc uh, which is localhost port 8545 and that's it you don't have to understand all of this right now but what we're doing is basically making sure that web3 is correctly created and that our provider is set but you will understand more of this as we go along we need to set up our default account for ethereum and this is done by typing web3.eth.default account and here we need to put one of the accounts that we saw when we started the test rpc let's see if i can find them these and in order to get the first one for example we would type web3.eth.accounts and this is the array of the accounts and we'll take the first one and now we need to create a new contract here and we do this by providing the web3 library with our abi file and that's a json structured file that tells our web3 api how our contract is structured what methods it has and what sort of inputs and outputs it should um, expect and we write this uh, by naming our contract and we can write this our value contract and then we need to type web3.eth.contract and in here provide the actual abi file and we can get this by going to remix and then go to compile click details and here is our abi file we can copy this entire file by clicking this little button and go back to our editor and just paste it all in here and this is just an array of objects in the json structure and that's it now we have defined value contract and i also need to uh, tell the api where it's located at and that is done by then getting let's see, type this value and then the name of our contract value contract dot at and then the address of our contract and we can find the address once again in remix but let's see exit that and go to run and we can copy the address by clicking this little button and then within quotes put it in here as a string and that's all we need to now in be able to interact with our contract and this is then done by typing value and then we can access the actual functions of our smart contract so we could for example here go get value because that was a function in our smart contract right get value and then we need to pass this a callback function and it will give us either an error or a result let's see and if we don't have any error then we can go ahead and update the value of our let's say we update the value of our title and that had id value and we're going to edit the html through our jquery library here and we're going to put the result in there 
but this result will have I think a big number format so we need to put two string as well uh, in order for it to work and if we do have an error we will just make sure to log it to the console so now when we load the page we will initiate our contract and we will get the value from the get value function and we will output it to our title and we can try this out by going to uh, your browser and just open up your HTML file in there. And when you've opened your file, we can open up the console here and see. Okay, I see. I've made a typo here. You'll have to go ahead and change it. Well, it's not HTTPS, it's just HTTP. We'll go back and let's see if it works. There we go, no errors. And we can see that it has fetched our value here. It is zero, just like it is in our contract, right? If you go here and check the value, it's going to be zero. And if we update it to something, let's say we set it to 100, and it's successfully updated, and we'll update our page. It all says 100. So this is now a direct connection to our backend, which is a smart contract, which is very cool. And what if we now want to set this value? We haven't implemented this. So now we're going to attach a handler to our button so we can use the set value function to update this. And we do this in jQuery by typing the ID of our button, then dot click and giving it a function. And in there, we can use our contract like before, our value contract, and we use the function set value. And then here we're going to give it the value of the input element, which was had the ID input. And then we get the value by having dot val as a function. We're going to save this and then go back to our web browser and update the page. And then we can try to set the value here again. So we're going to try to set it to 50. And then we need to update the page in order for us to load the new value. And now it's 50. So now either way, even if we go back to Remix here and we check the value, which previously we set to 100 here, it will now say 50. Because through our JavaScript code, we actually changed the value in the contract. So we can set the value here once again to 1000. Go back to our page. Update it, it's now 1000. I'm going to set it to 1. If I update, it's 1. So, and this of course opens up great possibilities. You can do a lot with this. Now you can create your web pages and you can have a decentralized backend pretty much where you can have your logic executed in smart contracts. And this of course only on a you know, local environment. It's not on the real blockchain. Uh, we're going to cover that in a later video. So to recap, we uh, have our logic here. We create the uh, contract from our ABI file and we then initiate this value variable where we can access all of our functions in our smart contract, which is get value and set value. And these will get the values from the Ethereum smart contract and this will set the value in the Ethereum smart contract. All right guys, that was it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Now you should understand how the test RPC works and how you can connect your smart contracts to your actual web front end. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section below. And if you have any suggestions for future videos, I would like to hear them as well. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.